What is going on? Welcome back to Trending Stocks. Today, we need to talk about SoFi. I want to go over some of the current data points, what is influencing the price today, and go over everything else you need to know. But first, make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Always greatly appreciate that. And with that said, let's get right to it. So currently, it is up 2.26%, a lot of volatility. So 9.39 the low, 9.67 is the high. For volume, 24.87 million shares have been traded so far. 45.6 is the average. So today is a little bit low for the volume you do see first thing there was a nice kind of bounce a value rally from yesterday's sell-off so that did happen across the board but because of GDP numbers coming out, it kind of was short-lived. But SoFi behind the scenes is trying to build enough momentum for it to try again to around that 970 range and then potentially higher from there. So I'm going to go over the technicals and everything else. Like I mentioned, GDP numbers did come in a little bit lower than the forecast. So forecast is 5.2, came in at 4.9. So something to consider. Looking at SoFi specific though, there has been no recent PRs, no SEC filings, nothing like that. So it's good. No more 144s. Last one was on Tuesday, December the 19th. So oddly enough, a lot of the insiders have been selling for whatever reason. Looking at shorts though, right now they are not really doing too much. They're increasing about 54,000 shares. 15.17% of the free float is being shorted. 135.65 million shares overall are being shorted and cost of borrow average is 0.96%. So very low, no real change from the day prior. Looking at the interactive broker short availability does indicate that there's around 6.5 million shares overall are being shorted. A lot of people are saying that shorts, SoFi shorts are dumb. They're going to lose a lot of money. And I kind of do agree, especially based on what some analysts have been doing. There hasn't been any recent ratings exactly. So the last one was done, I think, was six days ago. Yes, six days ago. Kevin Barker, 62% success rating. But there has been some amendments to their forecasts. Um, not necessarily with earnings per share, but they are in agreement with the company that it is going to be profitable this quarter. But looking more on the revenue, it went from 12 to 13 analysts, given estimates, and it went from 570.69 million to 571.37 million on a consensus for the Q4 revenue. So that's a fairly good thing. I do feel that a lot of good upside is coming with SoFi. This is why I did decide to sell some puts for this upcoming Friday's expiry date at the 950 strike price. So it's very close to where it's at. So if it does break below that, then I get some SoFi at 950. If it does stay above that, then whatever, I collect the premium. It's a win-win. Very advantageous to do options. And so that's a good transition into what is happening currently with options. Three 3.62 million dollars in calls being purchased versus 552,000 in puts. 56% of all the options activity today is bullish. So people are anticipating a continuation of that rally. Like I mentioned with uh, just looking on the chart, you can tell it is consolidating and in an attempt to build up enough momentum to try and kind of break past a big resistance point. So I'm going to break that down in a second. But looking at the call options that are being purchased today, there is a lot of anticipation for it to be above $10 by this upcoming Friday. And if it does close above that $10 mark, then there's going to be around 26,000 in open interest that does get exercised, which as a result will cause a nice bump up in the stock price as market makers do cover that. Looking at puts, it's anticipated to be sub $9 by looks like next week. So a little bit more linked to the technicals. So I'm going to go over the technicals in a second. There is one video I just wanted to play. It's only about two minutes long, so it's not long at all, but it does go over the key headwinds to banks in 2024, talking about rates, credit quality, and everything. So I find this is going to be very beneficial for a lot of investors to listen to, and especially some expectations of SoFi as well. Regulation in the banks, increasing capital requirements, and all this happening during election year. Year. Give us a sense. How do you see that playing out? Right. 2024 has got a lot of uh, themes that are really uncertain, right? 2023 was about interest rates, solvency, uh, earnings revisions. Uh, that is largely stabilized. Um, for 2024, we, we also have to talk about credit quality. We have to talk about the effects, the full effects of interest rates, and obviously an election. All right. Rates were the other big story when it came to SVB and just the banking sector in general last year. So this week, we had Goldman on. 
They were forecasting five quarter point cuts next year. What's your outlook for rate cuts um, and how does it impact the banking sector? Right. We're not we're not at five. We're at two. We think higher for longer is the more likely scenario. If you listen to the Fed, they've all talked about rates saying higher inflation needing to come down further. Um, but the futures market is certainly after the FOMC last week moved to a five to six cuts next year. Um, and just on a side note, I believe as an average, there is roughly going to be about three rate cuts. So you have this individual right here that says two. So Chris and then you have uh, Goldman Sachs with five so I feel like it's going to be around the three point and that's I've seen a couple articles about that as well We have to ask ourselves the question is why are they going to cut that aggressively if inflation does get to two percent and We do get the stick we stick the landing on, on inflation that would be good But if we see a weakening in the economy and five to six cut is because of um, Cyclical weakness. I think the banks are a tough spot. You know everybody wants the cuts, but nobody wants the economy to soften um, I want to talk something else that's really important for banks, especially our biggest banks. Um, the IPO, the M&A market. Um, oddly enough, we have a big M&A story today. Uh, obviously, two big media companies at least considering it. How important is that specifically for investors to see a pickup in IPOs, a pickup in M&A, M&A, just more activity for the banks that's higher margin? It's psychology, right? Investment banking in particular has been in a recessionary environment for the better part of two years. So closed capital markets, closed IPOs, IPOs that haven't traded great has all impacted sentiment. We think the pieces um, are in place for that to reopen. Interest rates coming down is certainly a component of that. As we as we know what the terminal rate of rates are, I think that'll help. So and that hands down will really help SoFi as well in 2024 uh, with their IPOs. And I think Instacart that recently IPO'd for SoFi, that was their very first big one. So I don't know, uh, what's your thoughts on that? But like I said, only wanted to play two minutes of this, very interesting on a viewpoint on what is coming in 2024. But moving on, let's talk on technicals. With it at $9.52, it is between this pivot and the R1. So 977, so that's the momentum right now that SoFi is building to hopefully get above. Then of course, above that is that psychological $10 mark and then 1025. $9 is gonna be that next strong support and below that is $8.23. So what's your thoughts on SoFi? Didn't even get anywhere close to this pivot point, so that's kind of a good sign going forward into the next couple days or I guess uh, today and tomorrow for Friday. So what's your thoughts on SoFi? Give yourself a shout out. Have you been buying? Have you been selling? What have you been doing? And when it comes to options, are you like myself? Do you like to sell puts? Do you do cover calls? Do you buy calls? What's your viewpoint on all that? Don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Always greatly appreciate that. And with all that said, I appreciate all of you watching.